Democratic Congressman Charlie Melanson represents Southern Louisiana's third district. Uh, Congressman, welcome. Thanks very much for joining us today. Let's talk about the response and whether or not you agree with Governor Jindal's uh, challenge, the legal challenge today that has been filed against the continuation of the moratorium on deep offshore drilling. Well, I'm never much for lawsuits. Um, I, I would have to agree with him. Uh, I guess if you look at the economy down here, the fishermen are hurting. Uh, everything related to the communities that are supported by the fishing industry and the oil gas industry are hurting. And if you take away the offshore drilling, the oil industry, then uh, you've taken all the legs off the three-legged stew that support the economy here. Uh, so yes, I, while I understand where the president may be coming from, I don't agree with the moratorium. Well, of course, to, just to go more deeply into what the president's position is, he says until we know exactly what happened, so many questions have been raised about all of the failures, the, the technical failures, the human errors, all of the things that led up to this disaster. Isn't it reasonable to have a moratorium, would be the president's argument. That's the argument that he made uh, in his address to the nation. Well, my concern is those those platforms, those vessels that may be out there that don't meet snuff, and there was a report on several days ago about another BP rig that might be worse than the one that went under in Deepwater Horizon. Uh, I'm concerned about those, but I believe that there's a way forward with protocol that we can keep drill those rigs operating without uh, penetrating the, the sands uh, or the oil sands that they're drilling for, keep them operating and make sure that those inspections go forward. There's got to be a way to do it without just shutting down the industry, collapsing our economy. Uh, I remember the 1980s. Uh, th this, this entire South Louisiana shut down, and I'm not talking about partially. It shut down. And while we've been a bright star or a bright light uh, in the economic condition of this country, uh, we're getting ready to go into a black hole if this moratorium goes forward. You know, just to button this down, would you at least want to hear from the different companies that they have a better response than the one that they outlined to Congress last week? Because it was clear that they had the same contingency response that BP did, which was uh, not a response, no that's plan one, at all. Yeah, that's one of the frustrations of trying to find this balance between drill, baby, drill, and shutting it down completely, uh, is that the all companies are not giving us uh, much hope of any remedy other than possible possibly the directional drilling that is ongoing right now. Um, that doesn't make me feel any better, uh, but then knowing that people are hurting already and more is to come uh, doesn't give me a lot of solace either. Congressman, what is the reaction this weekend? You've been down there talking to people about the fact that Tony Hayward, uh, not only is he still playing a role because there's been a lot of confusion from BP about whether he is in charge, isn't in charge, whether he's still in charge of the actual, you know, getting containment rather than the cleanup. But what is the reaction down there to the fact that he went out on his own 52-foot yacht and went in a sailing regatta this weekend on the Isle of Wight where the water is very clean indeed? Well, after his performance in front of the committee, uh, where he gave very little information whatsoever, uh, to uh, maybe the anticipation was him, him getting on his private jet and getting back to England so he could go sailing rather than concentrating on what we've been upset about, and that's the, the, the disaster uh, that his company has cost, caused, caused in the, the Gulf of Mexico. So, um, you know, I called for his resignation uh, more than a month ago. Uh, I still stand by that. Give us somebody that at least tries to demonstrate they give a damn about us, because I don't see that coming from, from uh, Ms. Taylor. Uh, I, I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to any of the people from the oyster, uh, the, the, the oyster company, Not Oyster today. Pure, I think it's called, American Oyster Pure, that I saw Kerry Neuropure. Sanders' stories. Um, what? What can be done for those people? Just watching the faces of those people as they were told that they were shutting down. Um, is there we, any about, immediate help? 
about two weeks ago we shut down the oldest oyster company in the probably the southern United States P and J oysters right here in the French Quarter of New Orleans uh, Ameripure is another one of those that's going to go uh, in the same situation uh, there's Collins down in, in Golden Meadow you've got companies that have been in business for decades if not over a century and that's part of the, the dilemma that we're faced with is we don't know what the final uh, consequences are going to be, how long this is going to take to clean up, and how much damage is going to be um, uh, in the coastal areas, especially the interior marshes uh, that are the, the um, ecosystem where the, the seafood starts its, its life cycles, uh, whether it's oysters or shrimp or red snapper, or you can go through the whole list. They either begin or have parts of their lifespans in these interior marshes. This oil gets in here, and that's the frustration is not getting that whole cap so that we could at least have a chance of, of collecting that oil. Uh, it's a catch-22 for us down here. Um, it's hard to say, uh, and, and one of the public officials down here made the statement, it's hard to ask you to allow the industry to go forward while standing in oil on the beaches and in the marsh, uh, but it is an integral part of our economy. It employs many people. They're well-paid people. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real dilemma. And finally, your reaction to Ken Feinberg, who in a series of interviews today assured people that they will be prompt with the claims that he's going to make sure that the money gets out and that there is uh, basically an unlimited amount of money. He said that $20 billion is not a cap, that he will make sure that BP, uh, make sure that all of your people are made whole. Well, the, his reputation for handling 9-11 claims uh, was a good reputation, and I hope that he does as stellar a job here as he did for the people of New York City. Um, we need all the help immediately. Uh, these people in South Louisiana along the Gulf Coast are hurting tremendously. Charlie Melanson, uh, who's been representing the people down there and uh, knows exactly what they are going through. Thank you very much, Congressman. Thanks for being Thank with you. us.